man has always been fascinated by space. Since the early days of civilization, humankind has studied the stars, naming constellations and planets. It's clear that what lies beyond our planet calls to us in some instinctive way. The United States has had a section of governmental research dedicated to outer space since 1915, but it wasn't until 1958 that NASA, or the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, was officially founded. Recently, many of NASA's discoveries and accomplishments have been in the news, including January's discovery of a new planet. This was one of only a few Earth-sized planets discovered in a star's habitable zone so far. But despite continuous groundbreaking research, there are many things in space that we can't claim to understand. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three NASA discoveries and mysteries. Holes in a Spaceship The International Space Station, or ISS, is a modern-day diplomatic marvel. Since the year 2000, it's been continuously inhabited by astronauts from countries all over the world, including Canada, Japan, France, Germany, and Italy. However, the primary operators of the NASA's two components are the United States and Russia. The ISS is manned by a crew of six astronauts, whose primary purpose is to conduct research. However, they're also in charge of maintaining the complex systems of the space station. According to NASA, over 230 hours of spacewalks, which is the term for leaving the station in a spacesuit, has been conducted by astronauts since the year 2000, primarily for construction, maintenance and repair. Since the lives of the crew depend on the ISS being in top working form at all time, it makes sense they spend so much of their time updating and checking its safety. For the most part, things typically function well. However, in August of 2018, something unusual happened. Flying controllers on the ground at Johnson Space Center in Houston noticed dropping air pressure in the ISS. They alerted the crew, who were quickly able to trace the air loss to a Russian capsule. It was temporarily docked after bringing three astronauts to the ISS in June. It's called the Soyuz and is a capsule of Russian design, primarily used for crewed spacecraft. It's heavily used in the ISS program to bring astronauts of all nationalities to space, and ferried researchers from Russia, Germany, and the US. The Soyuz was designed in the 1960s, and capsules of this design have made over 140 different flights. Any issue was rare. Upon closer inspection, it was discovered to have a serious issue, a small 2mm hole found to be the cause. It was quickly plugged with epoxy and tape, and the air pressure returned to normal. The astronauts were never in danger, however there was still a fair amount of concern. Where had the hole come from? Was it possible that micrometeoids or other debris could punch holes in the ISS? It was incredibly important to find out. It was sent back down to Earth in late December of 2018. Before it was sent back, Russian cosmonauts were sent on an 8 hour spacewalk to investigate. They cut a small sample to send back to Earth for study. On Earth, it was revealed that it was not a meteor that had made the hole, but rather an ordinary drill. Whoever drilled the hole had even attempted to cover it up with a patch job before giving up. Theories suddenly abounded. Officials from the Russian space program even implied it was some kind of sabotage. Unfortunately, no one's come forward and confessed to making this hole. The most likely solution? An engineer on the ground. The hole appeared to have come from the inside, and it's extremely hard to drill in the limited gravity of space. However, until the person responsible confesses, we might never know if the hole was truly a mistake or some kind of malicious act. The Dark Side of the Moon the dark side of the moon is a term that's commonly used to refer to the side of the moon that's further away from Earth, the side that we can't see. Humans weren't able to see this side until 1959, when it was photographed by a Soviet probe, and the first craft to land directly on the far side didn't even do so until January of 2019. All told, despite its familiar presence in the sky, much of the moon's surface remains a mystery. Scientists have known for some time that many of the moon's craters extend all around the surface of the planet. Not only is the far side cratered, 
It actually holds one of the largest observed craters in the solar system, called the South Pole Aitken Basin. The basin is 2,500 kilometers in diameter, and it ranges up to 8.2 kilometers deep. It's thought to have been created by massive impact from a meteor over 4 billion years ago. In the 1990s, a series of unmanned missions called the Galileo and Clementine visited the moon and took high-quality images of its far side. However, images were all we had to rely on until January of 2019. A year and a half ago, a Chinese spacecraft achieved humanity's first soft landing on the far side of the moon, touching down in the centre of the South Pole Aitken Basin. After a year of study, the Chinese government released the raw information gathered by this, including a revelation that stunned researchers. They had discovered a huge metallic mass located under the surface. According to researcher Peter B. James, he explained the mass was if scientists had taken a pile of metal five times larger than the big island of Hawaii and buried it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass we detected. One of the explanations of this extra mass is that the metal from the asteroid that formed this crater is still embedded in the moon's mantle. The 4.8 quintillion pound mass is so dense that it weighted the basin floor down by nearly a kilometre. The implications of this discovery are huge. Scientists can now closely study the results of interplanetary impact, and they can understand how foreign metals come to be on the moon and remain so close to its surface. The Moon, our nearest and most often studied neighbour, may hold many secrets yet. A cold spot in the universe The universe had to come from somewhere, and it started with a Big Bang. Billions and billions of years ago, when the universe was young, it was small, dense and hot, filled with a white-hot glowing plasma fog. As the universe expanded and cooled, atoms formed and the fog thinned. Billions of years later, our scientists can use what's left of the white-hot fog to understand the early days of the universe. We now call it cosmic microwave background radiation, also known as CMB. We can't see cosmic microwave background with the naked eye, or even with a normal telescope. However, it's everywhere, invisibly existing at temperatures of minus 273 degrees Celsius. Due to this temperature, the radiation waves are most visible on the part of the electromagnetic spectrum called microwaves. CMB has a nearly uniform temperature at Kelvin scales. This is the measure of degrees used in astronomy and space science. But when it's looked at more closely in a measurement called microkelvins, its temperature varies. This enables scientists to understand that matter in the universe isn't evenly distributed. Rather, some areas are far more dense than others. However, CMB also raises questions too. In 2004, a NASA probe discovered a cold spot in the CMB. Although the temperature of the cosmic microwave background radiation does vary, the cold spot is 50 times colder than the average variation. Furthermore, the cold spot is huge. Satellites and probes from all over the globe have independently verified its existence and size of over a billion light years across. It's unlikely that the CMB cold spot originated from the density fluctuations that cause other small temperature differences. There are three primary theories as to what could have caused this celestial phenomenon. One explanation is that a supervoid exists between the Earth and the cold spot, or an extremely empty area where limited galaxies and matter exist. This extremely low density of this void would not only cause slightly lower CMB temperatures, but particles travelling through it would be extra cooled due to an effect called late-time ISW. However, research so far have been unable to reliably determine if this supervoid does exist in this area, meaning this theory remains one of many. The second plausible statement of the CMB cold spot could be due to an abnormal movement of galaxies in the area due to extreme gravitational effects. These effects have been studied in several other areas in the universe, including at the Great Attractor. This is an anomaly at the centre of the supercluster, which contains our Milky Way galaxy. There's also unusual gravitational repulsion in our local group. However, no unusual structures like these, or of any other nature, have been observed in the area of the cold spot. This brings us to our last theory, which some argue is less plausible than the other two. 
Since there's no cosmic explanation for the cold spot, it's possible it could have been created as a result of a collision with another universe a long time ago. This could be the first ever piece of evidence into the theory of the multiverse. This is that there are billions of other universes outside of the one we can see. As of now, there's no proof that we live in a multiverse made up of parallel universes, though it's been considered a possibility. Scientists disagree. However, if we continue to study the universe's unusual cold spot, who knows what version of reality we'll uncover. Space is often called the last frontier, and it's clearly true that humanity is far from uncovering its secrets. So what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.